Hello and welcome to the walkthrough tutorial for the club admin area of the Northwest Counties League website. Uh, this tutorial is is basically for new club secretaries, um, existing club secretaries to get a refresh on the club admin area and to anybody else who needs access to the area. Uh, I know clubs can add as many people as they want. So this is a walkthrough for that area, basically. Um, I'll start with a little bit of information to get to it. So to get to the club admin area of the Northwest Counties website, we basically go to nwcfl.com forward slash club admin, uh, which will take you to the screen that's on there now. Um, you can also go to the home page of the Northwest Counties League website, scroll down past the news, past the fixtures and tables, as the sponsors and you get to the links areas here so this is the links to all the club pages uh, of the site and on the right hand side um, you do have links uh, to which club admin is one of them so if you click on that it will take you to the same place um, like I say club secretaries do sort of manage this area um, so if you do need access get your club secretary to email myself, Martin Fallon. Um, all I need is a, a, a name and an email address, and I will set you up as a user. Um, that's pretty much it. You'll get an email from myself, or not from myself, but from the system. Uh, as soon as I set you up, it does have a link on that email address. You click on the link. It'll ask you to put in your own password. Um, all passwords are secure. Um, it's a 32 bit encryption on the password. So all I see is 32 numbers and letters basically. Can't, can't tell what the password is. Um, and, and that's it. So, yep, as soon as you've got access, you'll be able to log on to here. So you put your username in the top bit, which is in my case, I'm using secretary at runcorntown.co.uk. Um, and the password that I've set up. So when I log in, I see the club admin area exactly the same as, as yourselves would. Um, there's seven different areas here, or six different areas and, and a logout. So I'm going to go through these one by one, um, starting with tasks, which is the main one, um, which I'm going to do in two areas. I'm going to do match day tasks uh, and also non-match day tasks. Um, and then all the other six areas I'll do in in basically another area um, walkthrough. So, yeah, I'll move on to tasks, um, starting with tasks on a match day. Okay, so we'll start by looking at the tasks area. Uh, like I say, this is specifically for match days. so. And there's a match going on. You go into the tasks area, and there'll be a list of matches uh, for that club for the next seven days. Um, for this example, we're doing AFC Liverpool versus Chatterton. Um, it's a dummy match on the 17th of July, which is this evening. So I'm acting at the minute as AFC Liverpool secretary. So I will see. On the screen what the AFC Liverpool secretary will see. So if we jump over to it now, we see the tasks menu in the first one and the top row. So we'll click on tasks. And we can see that you know at present the fixtures are not out. So there's um there's only one match available. Like I say, there's uh it's only matches in the set the next seven days that appear here. So you can see what's coming up in the next week. There's nothing obviously before because the fixture's not out yet. Uh, we can see the fixture itself. This is our dummy fixture for today. And it'll say on the right hand side what's required. So the team sheet's currently required. Uh, and it's got a button at the end. You can see the colour of these is red. The idea is to make them green. And when you've done every task that you need to do, they will turn green. So we'll click into the fixture 
and you come up with a match index. So this is in sort of time order on a match day. You'll start off with your team sheet, which you'll have to enter, you know, up to one hour before kickoff. You've got change team sheet, so that's to, you know, we're within sort of 45 minutes of kickoff. Somebody goes down injured in the warm up, or a player, you know, is stuck in traffic and is not going to get there for kickoff, who you've named. So you have to change the team sheet. You do so there. Print team sheets is, as it says, it prints an A4 copy of the team sheet. That's to, for the home secretaries to give to the match referee. It's got all the information on that you need. And create team sheets image uh, creates a JPEG image of the team sheets, which is for distribution via social media on Twitter and on Instagram primarily, uh, also on Facebook. Enter notes is where you can enter notes uh, throughout the match. And then the last three are all post-match stuff. Firstly, where you enter the result. Uh, that also incorporates your goal scorers and your attendances. There's enter match details, which is any other details. Uh, that follows later, such as cautions, dismissals, sim bins, selecting your man of the match, putting on what you paid the referee. That sort of stuff. And finally is the respect report. Uh, that's done for every single league game in the Northwest Counties League. So the only thing that's not done in this area is the referees report, which is done on MOAS, uh, which is an FA system. So you start from the top. Um, before we come on to team sheets, this is the first one. You see above it, you've got postponed game. So, for example, this is a, an evening game, 7.45 kickoff, gets to 4 o'clock, and you think, we need to postpone this game. Click there. You don't have to ring anybody up. You don't have to ring John Deal, or Paul Lawler, or myself. You don't have to send any emails um, at present. You simply have to come onto the club admin area, go into the fixture, click postpone, and you'll get to this page. And all you have to do is, in the box here, it's a drop-down box, you've got four options. The first three are, basically 95% of the time, will be one of these three. It'll be a waterlog pitch, and then we get to sort of December, January time, you're looking at snow-covered pitches or frozen pitches. Simply select what you need from there, click confirm postponement i'll do that in a minute just to mention other so other is any other reason for a postponement it could be floodlights have failed it could be the water pipes have burst it could be you know unfortunately a death within a club and we need to postpone the game um anything that's you know out of the ordinary reason would go in other now other is it's usually not on a match day it's usually you know a couple of days before a match We'll postpone it on here. So there's usually an email trail to a company and other reason, but you know, I will go and investigate if you do select other here. I'll probably ring the match secretary um, and, and get the reason why so I can put it on. But you come on here, you'd select the reason on there, you click confirm, confirm postponement, and what that does, it sends an email through to the match reports team. Um, one of the match reports team, usually myself, uh, will go on. We'll postpone the fixture. Um, we'll also put it onto social media that that game's postponed. Like I say, these are usually on a match day. So it's usually, you know, for a Saturday kickoff, half past 10, 11, 12 o'clock. Um, same for an evening kickoff. You're looking at sort of 2, 3, 4 p.m. Uh, when they come through. So... I'll return back to Club Admin, back into Tasks, back into More. So if the game's not postponed, it's going ahead, we go into Team Sheets and Submit Team Sheets. We know it's not been done because that's what it asked us to do on the previous page. So we can see we need to fill in our Team Sheet for today's AFC Liverpool versus Chatterton match. There's two buttons at the top here. Those copy the last home information or the last away game information 
as it's the first game of the season, there's nothing in the database, so these don't work. But if they did, you know you're on, say, your second home game of the season, you can come in here, you can click copy last home game. And the, the reason for that is because usually a lot, not a lot changes. You might name an unchanged lineup, but the colours will be the same. The technical area will be roughly the same. The squad will be roughly the same. So it's, it's to get things in here very quickly, and it means that you as as users of this system will do very little work to do your team sheets. Like I say, there's none there at the minute, so we'll go through what we have to do. First, your colours. So your shirt colours. Now you can click in the drop down. It gives you a list of all the different permutations within the league. We've got red. You can go to the next one and click it. Or... You can press the tab button, which will automatically tab to the next bit of information that's needed. So if we're in here, it'll tab across to this box. We can use the keyboard instead of, you know, selecting on the drop down. So if we press R, go to the R's. If we press B, go to the B's. P, go to the P's, etc. So you can easily do R and then tab and then R and then tab. You can get through it very, very quickly. Goalkeepers. We've changed this this year. Previously, you had to select the goalkeeper shirt, shorts and socks. But what we found is a lot of goalkeepers are either all one colour, so all orange, for example, or they'll have black shorts or black socks. Now, any of those are fine. You just need shirt colours not to clash with the opposition. Or the referee. So your shirt colour, select from there. Let's say gold. And that's it done for your colours. Your technical area is who is on the bench for that match. So again, on the drop down list, there'll be a list of players, not players, sorry, there'll be a list of staff who have been registered with the league on a data registration form. That basically gives them permission to go in the dugout and technical area. That's what data stands for. So we'll go Phil Stafford. Go James McShane. We'll go Stephen Scott. Now there's no roles in here. You as the Home Secretary or someone who's doing this on behalf of the Home Secretary will know who these people are. You know, you'll know who's in the technical area. You'll know who to put. You start in 11. Exactly the same. It's a drop-down list of all registered players. So we'll go through. Adam Moorcroft in goal. Dave Parkinson, number three. Uh, number two, sorry. Connor Golden, number three. Michael Brown. Tom Douglas. Luke Stevens. Connor Christensen, Sonny Parr, Adam Moorcroft, Bradley Sherwood, William McCarthy. That's our starting 11 for this match. On to substitutes. Exactly the same. Keep going. Dave Parkinson, Jason Fulton, Daniel Hughes, James Howell. William Edwards. Okay, that's our squad for the match. We can see 1 to 11 is pre populated here. And the reason for that is your starting 11 for most Northwest Counties League games will be 1 to 11. It may be that your 13, uh, your three shirt has been ripped in the last game. You're waiting for a replacement from your kit supplier and you've had permission off the league to. Wear an additional shirt. So 13 for this game. Maybe 18. Your substitutes are not pre-populated. Because some clubs have 12 to 16 as their substitutes. Some have 12 to 17 with no number 13 shirts. Or they might go to 18 or 19. It really does depend. But you need to key in. What numbers your substitutes are going to wear. So 12, 14. Again, 
We can use the tab button. It knows what box needs to be go to next. So 15, 16, 17. Very easy. Couple of boxes to go. This one's your captain. The captain's a drop down list of all your players. So let's go for Christopher Happy Fankham. And finally, your officials for the match. You do get your officials from the MOAS system. But you put them in here. So we'll put Terry Hank. We'll put Paul Potts. And we'll put Billy Bingham. They're our match officials. That is everything you need. Every box is done. And you'd submit your team sheet. One thing to be aware of, you've technical area. You've got six boxes here. You can have up to six staff in your technical area if you want, but do remember that your technical area plus substitutes must add up to eight. Eight is the limit for Northwest Counties League matches of who can appear in the dugout. If you go to nine, if you go to ten, you'll get a charge from the league because you're breaking a rule so just watch out for the eight like i say you can have five subs three technical area you could have six technical area and two subs if you wanted to not sure why you'd want to do that but you could do but please just be aware that that plus that should be eight or no more than eight you can have less than eight if you want to so We'll click submit team sheet. You may have noticed when I was putting the team sheet in, there's a couple of duplicates in here, and there's a reason for that. So when you submit your team sheet, it will tell you. Adam Moorcross has been selected more than once. Dave Parkinson has been selected more than once. And we've selected a captain who's not in the starting 11. Obviously, your captain's got to be on the pitch. So we'll click to make amendments. And then when we go back, it remembers what you put in from last time. Adam Moorcroft was meant to be Andrew Starkey. I forgot the other one, Dave Parkinson. Yep, Dave Parkinson was meant to be... I can't remember if he used or not used now. Daniel Abdus. Don't think I've used Daniel. But we can find out in a minute anyway. Obviously, when you're putting it in, you'll have a list from your manager um, of, of the squad for that day. And Christopher obviously can't be the captain because he's not in the starting 11, so we'll put Bradley Sherwood instead. Click Submit Team Sheet. And we get a Please Confirm page. This is on every page within the club admin area. Whenever you do anything, it gives you a summary and asks you to confirm. You know, I do get quite a number of calls saying my team sheet's not saved, my details haven't saved. A lot of the reason is because you've not confirmed it. You've done this bit and then you've come off it. You know, it only saves once you read through it and you submit it. So it says, Dear Martin, thank you for your team sheet submission for this game. Please confirm. It's the Northwest Counties badge with that on it. Below is a summary. Use the buttons at the bottom to save or amend. So we've got our colours. Red, 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 with gold as the goalkeeper. Our technical area, Phil, James and Stephen. And our starting 11, including the number 18 shirt there, as you can see. And we've got our five substitutes. We've got Captain Bradley. And we've got our officials, Terry, Paul and Billy. Perfectly happy with that. Save team sheet. It says, thank you for your team sheet. Lineup has been successfully added. So return to the club admin area now. We go back into tasks. We can see that team sheets required has changed to result required because technically that's the next thing that the Northwest Counties League, uh, the Northwest Counties League require. We go back into it. You see that the first five are all green now. 
give some message to your team sheet. If there's no changes to be made, the next thing we need is a result, which is why all these are green. If we are within, and I think it's an hour of kickoff, and maybe four to five minutes, I'm not too sure, make changes will be available. So looking at the time, click make changes. It tells you exactly what's been done before. Your shirts, your technical area. It's exactly the same screen that we had. So it may be that Michael Brown has gone down in the warm-up. He needs to come off. Joel Stringer goes on in his place. Now oh, let's put somebody from the bench on. Put Jason. Jason Fulton in his place. So Jason goes on there. Now obviously Tom... He was in the starting lineup. He cannot then go on the bench. It's an FA rule that the injured players cannot go on the bench. It's one that a couple of clubs do get wrong throughout the season when there are late changes. They think they can, you know, he's, he's got a bit of a knock. We'll, we'll put a substitute in his place. We'll put him on the bench. Not allowed to do that. He's not allowed to be involved, the player that you're taking out of the starting 11. So we'll put Jason on the bench. And we'll replace Jason with James Farr. Happy with everything else? Nothing else has changed. Click change team sheet. Which again is the exact same screen asking you to confirm. And it'll tell you what you've changed. So 4 is Jason Fulton. Was Michael Brown. And 14 is now James Farr. Was James Fulton. Nothing else has changed. Happy with that? Click Save Changes. And the lineup has been successfully updated. So we'll go back to the club admin area. And from an ASV Liverpool perspective, we're done. I'll just go back into the match index to show you a couple of other things. Print team sheet. Cannot do that. And the reason I can't do that is because although us as AFC Liverpool have entered our team and it is, you know, less than an hour to kick off, Chadderton have not entered their team. So therefore, we're not allowed to print the team sheet because both teams have not been submitted. That basically stops you printing half a team sheet out, you know, to, to get an idea. If, if Chadderton did it, they'd be able to see AFC Liverpool's team perhaps get an advantage. Stops you doing that. You can only print when you are within an hour of kickoff and both teams are in. So the good thing about that is you could do all that in the morning as a club secretary. You know, 10 o'clock, having your breakfast at home. You could do what you think the team would be and then just edit it in the hour beforehand. Nobody's going to see it. And you've done a lot of your preparation before you're actually there on a match day. So we'll go back to the fixture. Exactly the same for team sheet images. We can't create the images and both teams have not submitted theirs yet. So we wait for Chatterton. Okay, so we've left it a few minutes and the Chatterton lineup is now in. Um, so if we go to tasks, let me say every result required, we can go into more and print team sheet. What will that do? I'll print a team sheet out um, as a PDF. It's got the logo on the top that correlates with the competition. FC Liverpool Chatterton, Premier Division, today's date and time for the kickoff. It's got benches and colours, so the referee can check them. It's got who's who. Um, and it does have the positions next to it on this screen. That's so the referee can check that each team does have a physio. Looking at the starting 11, you know, we've got 1, 2, 11, apart from number 18 here that Connor had. Bradley is captain there, and Jake is captain for Chatterton. Substitutes, five substitutes for AFC Liverpool, four for um, Chatterton. And it names the officials at the home team point. So that's that.
you can just print that off, go take it to the referee, get instructions as both secretaries. And just note that secretaries are still obliged to go and see the referee. Um, even though there's no exchange of team sheets now and it's on there, the referee does need a copy 45 minutes before kickoff. And both home and away secretary or match secretary should go to the referee's office together and get any instructions from the referee. And you can also click this button here, which is to download it. And that'll save it to your computer as a PDF. We'll go back, create team sheet image. Like I say, it's an image there with the AFC Liverpool back uh, badge in the background. That's for sharing on social media. And one underneath for Chatterton with the Chatterton badge in the background. These are all colour coordinated, they're produced automatically. All you have to do, right click, copy image, and if you go into Twitter, you could paste that in. Um, if you're viewing this on a mobile phone, even easier. You just hold down the image, click share, and share it on, you know, wherever you want to, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Just a, an easy way to get the lineups out. So we'll return to the fixture. Okay, that's everything before the kickoff. The referee is happy with the team sheet. There's no changes to be made. We crack on. The game's going on. We want to use the notes facility. Please note this is purely optional list. Um, as Secretary of Runcorn Town, I would not use this. I, I'd have a, a clipboard with the team on and make my notes there. But some people might want to use it. It got requested. So you just enter your notes. So if you're following it through, might be 16 minutes. I can't remember any of the other players' names, so apologies to AFC Liverpool. Paul Smith scores. Add note. Let me go back to the fixture and back into notes. It remembers what you put. So you could stay on this screen if you wanted to. 34 minutes. Paul Scholes equalises. I'm only saying Paul Scholes because, again, I don't know any Chatterton. And, ups, and I know Paul occasionally watched last season um, when his lad was playing for him. So I add notes. And you can just keep returning to the notes here. Um, 90 plus 4. Um, Peter Jones. It's winner. I'm not saying who for. I'll let you decide. Add notes. You can say it's optional. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't, that's fine. So again, we'll return to the fixture. So the next thing we really need is, is the results. So, end of the match, you go onto the club admin area and you click enter match result. You can see in the green box there, we've added the following notes during that match. So any notes that you add will appear on this screen. Uh, and the information that's needed for this match is 90 minute score, which you put in the drop down here. It allows up to 20 goals per side, which, you know, we've never had 20 goals scored in the North West County game, so hopefully you won't. Uh, and the attendance. Now, if this was a cup game, it would ask you for score after 90 minutes, if applicable. Score on penalties, if applicable. Might not need to put them, but it knows, depending on the competition, what you'd need to put. So for most league games, it'd just be these three. So what we're doing here, I'll put it as a 4-3 thriller. And the attendance was 245. What well, results in attendance there? On AFC Liverpool, we put four goal scorers. So it knows on the next page that you need to add four. So the first drop-down list is 
you're starting the 11 plus substitutes that you named for the match. So it could be that Andrew scored there and he scored in the 12th minute. Second goal, William. Scroll down, 41 minutes. That was a penalty. You click the box. Simple as this. The third goal, number four, Jason Fulton. Now you can see here, at the end of the first half, you've got up to 10 minutes of stoppage time. So if we score five minutes into stoppage time, say, at the end of the first half, you'd select that. And similarly at the end of the second half, so it might be one of the substitutes, Daniel, that scored. You'd scroll down to the end, and you've got 90 minutes here. It does go down to 120, and obviously the reason for that is for cup games. Extra times played, and the numbers are there if you need them. You see underneath Chatterton, we'll enter their own goal scorers. So from an AFC Liverpool perspective, their secretary, oh, I've missed the time out there. Sorry, let's put 90 plus two. Um, from an AFC Liverpool perspective, they don't need to worry about Chatterton's goal scorers. Um, Dave, the Chatterton secretary, will, will do exactly the same from his end. He'll log on and he'll put the Chatterton goal scorers in the minutes. So there we go. Add goal scorers. Again, ask you to confirm. So it tells you the result, your attendance, your home goals. Andrew, 12. William, 41st minute penalty. Jason, in five minutes into stoppage time at the end of the first half. And Daniel, two minutes into stoppage time at the end of the second half. Away goals, Chatterton to enter their own. So save results. And that's the result done. Go back into tasks. Next one's match details required. Now, the match result is required straight away at the end of the game. It should be the number one thing that you do as a secretary or a match secretary. You know, don't be going off paying the referees, getting instructions, doing this, that and the other. Number one is to put your match results on. And the reason for that is uh, obviously myself has to um, collate all the results. Uh, I put it into the newsletter and I also let the press know. We do our printing deadlines for the Sunday press. So it is critical that we get it out as soon as possible. Your other stuff, your match details and your respect reports, they're not required for three days until after the match. So what I do as Secretary of Runcorn Town, I'd enter the result straight away and then I wouldn't worry about it. The match details and the respect report I would do on a Sunday. You know, sit down with a nice cup of coffee uh, and get it done. Um, but it's entirely up to you. I know Ken at Congleton Town. He used to go in the office. He used to do the results, the match details and the respect report because he wanted it all done on a Saturday so he could forget about it. He didn't have to do anything on a Sunday. So it's entirely up to yourselves how you want to play it. But just to make you aware, we don't need these until three days later, whereas the result we do need immediately. So what you do, enter match details, click on that. And these are the details from your game. So you can see at the top, you've got your starting 11. Your goals are automatically filled because we already did them. And, you know, we've already selected the goal scorers. And then these ones are Sinbin, this column, yellow card and red card. So let's say, for example, Jason got Sinbin. Luke got a yellow card. So did Andrew. And Tom Douglas. Sorry, Tom. But you got a red card in that game. For the substitutes, you tick the box here if they came on. If they didn't come on, don't need to do anything. But Daniel's obviously come on because he scored a goal. James came on as well, so did William. 
So did Daniel. The only one who didn't was James. However, James did get a yellow card because you can get a yellow card and not come on the pitch. Similarly, in your technical area, Phil James or Stephen can get a yellow card. You can get sent off. So if you need to, tick these boxes. If you don't, obviously leave them. Your other information's at the bottom. So, own goals. If there was an own goal scored, again, that would be pre-populated. Subs here. If you leave all them blank, we don't know, from a league perspective, whether you've accidentally done that or not. So, you either need to tick one of those, of who you've used, or tick if no subs used. So if no subs came on, you just tick that box. But you've got to either tick that or a combination of these. And exactly the same for the no cards issued. You know, if, the, if it was just blank from a match reports team, we wouldn't know if you just made a mistake and cl clicked um, submit too early. So you've got to either have cards, i.e. Simbin, yellow card or red card, or tick no cards issued if there was no cards in the match. In our instance here, we did have some cards, so we don't tick that box. Opposition man of the match. There's a drop-down list, and this is the starting 11 plus substitutes that were named for the opposition. So it's not the whole squad, it's just who was named. So we'll put Jamie as man of the match for the opposition in this instance. Next thing is the expenses. Now there's no need to put this pound sign here, as it says there. But we do need the expenses. We do not need the fee and the expenses. Because we know what the fees are. The expenses are there purely so that we can work out at the end of the season who gets old money and who has to pay additional money. And the reason for that is obviously because we have an equalisation of expenses in the league. So that every club ends up paying the same for officials, no matter where they're located. Please do not round up. You know, let's say Terry Tank's expenses here for £21.96. Don't put 22 Need to know exactly what it is. So Paul Potts, £14.25. Well, you can't have 25 I don't think. 24 And this one will be £8.42. There are no expenses. Let's say they all live within two minutes' walk of the ground. It's not going to happen, but, you know, could happen. Tick that. So exactly the same as the above. It's either expenses in these box, or you tick the box. So... Twenty-one pound, fifteen pound, ninety-six, eight pound, forty-two. And the very last thing, notes. Any notes you want the league to be aware of from the game, you would put in this box. Now, could be. The other two were great opponents and very sporting. Anything you want to put in there? You might want to complain about the opposition. You might want to praise the opposition. Type what you need to in that box. Once you're done, add details. So we'll do that. And again, you're getting used to this, is please confirm. So your goal scorers, there's four of them. There they are. Substitutes, again, four of them used. We had one in the sim bin, Jason. We had Luke, Andrew and James on yellow cards and Tom with a red card. We selected Jamie as the opposition man of the match. And they're the three expenses for the officials. Finally, there's the notes that we put. So if you're happy with them, click confirm details. If you're not happy, just click to make amendments and you go back to the page. Again, it remembers what you put. So we do that. Oh. 
Man of the match. Oh, it's there. Not sure what happened then. Add details. If you're happy with it, click confirm. And you confirm it. Thanks for your details. And we'll go back to the club admin. Finally, respect report required. Again, I find it better to do that the next day. And one of the reasons for that, we've had a lot of discussions as the management committee on this. Um, if you're marking the opposition, is it better to do it the next day? So, you know, you're not marking with any emotion. You, you're dealing in facts and the emotion from the match has died down. So, enter respect report. And it's it's like a survey. Did the away club acknowledge the match confirmation? There's four different areas. Excellent, good, satisfactory or poor. Now, you may think that, you know, some of these are yes, no answers. Did the away club acknowledge the match confirmation? Why is there four? Well, the, the reason that there's four is because sometimes you get an acknowledgement straight away. Or they might, he might email you back and say, just, just away for this evening and I'll do it tomorrow. You know, some you get it on the last minute, which might be satisfactory. Some you don't get it at all, so it might be poor. So it's a sliding scale, entirely up to you, what you put, you know, or what you regard as excellent, good, satisfactory or poor. All we'd ask is remain consistent throughout the season. You know, if a club emails back straight away, don't give them excellent and then give the next three teams satisfactory if the email back in the same time frame. Just be consistent throughout the season. So, did they acknowledge it? Yes, excellent, excellent. Opposition good it out. Did they act appropriately? It was okay. They moaned a lot. This is purely confidential. Even the League Management Committee don't see this. It's the... Um, Respect coordinator Oni. That's the only person who sees it. Dressing room care. Yeah, it was good. Papers was good. Did the away club turn up? No, they didn't. They got off straight away. So poor. Opponent's attitude. Yeah, they were okay. But they got off straight away, like I say. But the secretary and chairman did say thank you. So, yeah, excellent. No sendings off. They confirmed Australian Hossalzi. Yes, they did. And then comments. You know, it may be you're poor here. You may be going to put a reason why. Poor for hospitality. Because away team went home straight after the match. I've given. I've given poor for hospitality because away team went home straight after the match. You go. What you put is entirely up to you. Like I say, it's complete confidential. Nobody will see this apart from the respect coordinator, which is Stuart Taylor, and he will feed back to the league management and to clubs. You know, on on how teams are doing, what they can improve on. It's a very good service as long as it's used right. So again, add respect report. Need to confirm it. So everything we put there, excellent, excellent, satisfactory, good etc. If you're happy with it, save the report and it saves it. It will also email through a copy of that respect report to Stuart Taylor, who's the respect coordinator. So let's go back to our club admin, back into task. We've gone green now. Everything submitted. We go into it and we can see that all the buttons are green. Now you can go back into these. So if we go into match result, we can see what we put. If we get, look at match details, we can see what the match details were. Similarly, respect report, we can see exactly what we put. The very last thing I wanted to show you, because there's not much else, we're on green. If, you, if you're in the game itself, and you scroll to the bottom, there's an audit. We know exactly when things were done. So you can tell from the time when I'm doing this tutorial, even. 17th of July, half past seven. 
eight o'clock. So we know we submitted the team sheet at that time. You know the result was submitted at that time. So if you are, if you get a charge, for example, say you didn't do the results, you didn't put it in, it's time stamped on here. It knows exactly when you do things. So, you know, please act accordingly. There should be no charges, which is what we want. We don't want to be issuing charges to clubs. Um, everything's done there, great. We can forget about that match. I'm going to have a beer. Um, the only thing I would say, the badge at the top. Click on the badge. This is on any page. You go back to the home page. So that's all for tasks on a match day. Like I say, you go into here. It'll have any games in the next seven days. You just work your way through on a match day. Um, and there should be nothing wrong. Should be fine. There are tasks that take place on non-match days. And we'll cover them in the next section. Okay, so now we're going to look at the tasks, but for non-match day, uh, previously this was just really for player of the month, um, which occurred, you know, up to the third of the month. I think it appeared a week before, so starting the twenty seventh, uh, and you had till the third to do it. But for this coming season, we're adding quite a little bit more information. So I'm going to. Go back on as Runcorn Town this time and I've put a load of tasks in um, which will appear in the next couple of weeks uh, for Runcorn Town. Um, all this is dummy data, um, but we'll explain it as we go along. Uh, obviously, it will be real data uh, when you do view it on your club admin area. So if it's there, please address it. Um, so I'll switch back over now. As you can see, I'm logged onto the club admin area here um, as Runcorn Town. And if we go into tasks, there's a load of tasks here. Um, June Player Awards there. That's the only one you will have seen before. But basically, if there is a task in here that has got, in red, something to do, then please, as club secretary, complete the task. So the first new one, shall we say, um, is discipline charges. So discipline charges will be administered via the club admin for this coming season. You can see that there's two of them here, these bottom two, one by the 22nd of July, one by the 8th of July. So, as we've established, I'm recording on the 17th of July here. So, what will happen is a discipline charge will be raised. And as soon as it's raised, it will appear on your task list. And you will have seven days to reply to that charge. So, as you can see here, discipline charge LM3111 needs to reply to the charge required. So you will go into here, click the more button. It will say discipline charge LM3111. Dear secretary, here's the charge number, here's the charge date, here's the date of offence, the 7th of July. Uh, run gone town here by charge with a breach of league rule 8.6, which was causing a late kickoff. Discipline details, late kickoff, run gone town versus Daisy Hill. Reported as 7.53 p.m. And it has been reported by the match referee, Paul Smith. And obviously, all this is dummy data. There was no actual match on the 7th of July against Daisy Hill. But if you're hit with a charge, it will be real data, like I say. Uh, the penalty for breach of this rule is a minimum of a fine of £15 plus £2 per minute to a maximum of £30 plus £2 per minute. As per the fines tariff, so these these league rules are real. The penalty, as per the fines tariff, they are real. So this is what you will see in your club admin area. You know, for 
the real charges. It'll say the date of the offence. And you'll have seven days from then. No, you won't have seven days from then, sorry. You'll, it'll say the date of offence. It'll say the charge date. And you'll have seven days from the charge date to respond. So the charge date, 15th of July here. We go back. You've got till the 22nd of July to reply. The bit underneath, I'll let you read that, you know, as and when you get a charge. It's basically saying that you can accept it. You can accept it, put hopefully a mitigation in. Like, you know, for the example, this one. Causing a late kickoff. We bought it to 7.53. Yes, there was a late kickoff, but there was traffic on the M6, for example. We didn't arrive until 7 o'clock. Usually, like I say, a charge is not a fine. A charge is a charge. You can then reply to the charge. You can deny the charge, submit an explanation, or request a personal hearing. They're the four options there. So if we scroll down, choose your plea. Plea required. We're either guilty. We're guilty with a plea of mitigation. We're not guilty. Or we're not guilty but one require a personal hearing. So if we're guilty, we click submit plea. As you well know by now, please confirm. There's the charge number, the date, the charge itself, and the plea from the club, guilty. So we'll save the plea or amend it. Actually, I want to amend it. Don't want to put it guilty. I want to plead not guilty. When you plead not guilty, it doesn't come up with a please confirm. It comes up with another box. Please type your letter of explanation here. So, Runcorn Town plead not guilty to the offence. There was a late kickoff. Oh, 7.53 p.m. This was due to Daisy Hill arriving late at the ground due to traffic on the M6. One deal was informed by telephone of the delay. Now basically, type in an explanation. If there's a valid explanation, it will get taken into account. So you type your letter there. Submit play a letter. So again, it'll say, please confirm with the charge number, the offence date, the plea from the club, not guilty, letter of explanation. And it's got the letter of explanation there. So again, we can amend the plea here. We can amend the letter if we want to. We can save the plea a letter. So we'll save it. And that's been saved. So the discipline panel will be notified of that plea. And a copy of your response will be emailed through to your email address. So if I go back to the club admin area, I can see that discipline charge LM111 has gone from red to orange. Now orange is league processing. I can go back into it. I can have a look what we pleaded. I can have a look at the letter that we typed in. Let's go back to Club Admin, sorry. So we're going to Tasks here. I can, I can view that. Now the other one here is the 8th of July. Now as we mentioned, we were on the 17th today. If we're going to here... This charge was on the 26th of June. We had a charge date of the 1st of July. So therefore, Runcorn Town had until the 8th of July to reply to this date. Runcorn Town didn't put a, a response in. So therefore, no plea entered more than seven days since charge was issued. Runcorn Town can't do anything about this now. Clubs have seven days from when it goes on to reply. If they don't reply in them seven days, 
then it will be passed to the discipline panel, which is why it is orange. And it says lead processing out of time. When the discipline panel deal with cases, it will then go back to red and it'll say something else here. Um, obviously, I can't show you that in this demonstration, but if it's red, click on more and deal with it. Um, what it would likely say is another box at the bottom here that says discipline panel response. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show another video once the discipline panel have replied to this. Um, so we'll come back to that later. Um, but yeah, in, in effect, any charges that come up, just reply to them. You've got one on the four drop downs there. Like I say, letter of explanation, or we want to plead guilty, but we want to put a plea of mitigation in. For both of them two, you need to type a letter, but the letter you do online on the club admin area. So all discipline charges will be online on here. Um, like I say, I will do a separate video for what happens when the discipline panel reply. Um, it will basically, it'll, it'll give you a set time to, to pay. And once you've paid, it will turn green saying charge complete because the idea of the club admin as we've established is to turn everything green um also other tasks which are new annual accounts so run down towns annual accounts are required by the 31st of july so we'll click more there please send us a copy of your annual accounts for the year ending 30th of october i should say 2022 because again this is just uh, dummy data needs to be with us by the end of July should be accompanied by the minutes that approve the accounts please send them through to secretary at nwcfl.com so that, that's a task that's completed via email once they've received that um, John Deal or Debbie Jessup will go into that and they'll put a date completed. Once they've done that, this will turn green. Simple as that. So any task, it will tell you on there what you have to do. Floodlight certificate required by the 24th of August. So we're going to it. Your current floodlight certificate runs out on the 24th of August. Please send us a copy by this date. Rugland Town will not be able to use the ground for any... Game requiring floodlights, if you've not sent it to us by them, charges could be raised for failure to supply, so please get this done as soon as possible. The current floodlight certificates as follows. Again, dummy data here, minimum reading, maximum reading, average reading. These are like lux readings. Please send a new report through to the secretary. As soon as the secretary receives it, they'll go in, they'll put the date in that they did receive it, and that task will turn green. It'll say floodlight certificate received. And then when you go into it, it'll have your latest floodlight certificate there. Um, June player awards required. Obviously, we don't do any re um, in June, but it's exactly the same as previous seasons for existing club secretaries. For new club secretaries, you've got till the third of the month to do it. So we don't do June, but we do do, Ju we do, do July and August. So you'll have till the 5th of September to do July and August data. You'll go in. June player awards required. Enter report. You'll go through here. You'll type your name. The players from the drop-down list. What position, how many games he played in the month, how many times he got man of the match, etc. And the reason for your nomination. I'll type in the box here. You know exactly what you want. The more you type, the more you know. The better your nomination, the better your justification, the better your chances of your player winning this award. What what I would do as a club secretary, I'd type everything offline into Notepad, for example. Um, once I've got them there, you know, if I just go down to here, 
open up notepad I type everything in here Joe blogs reserves to win the Northwest Counties League Player of the Month for June 2023 because blah 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 and I'd fill in I'd go through in my game justifying why Joe should win this award the end of it I'd copy and I'd paste it into here I'd have everything prepared before you come on to here basically exactly the same with goalkeeper of the month but you do need to put the glove size of the goalkeeper in here you know Glove size 10, glove size 12. And again, the amount of games played, the amount of clean sheets, the amount of goals conceded, and the reason for your nomination. So do it offline, copy it, paste it in here. Um, once you've done it, submit your nominations. Um, obviously, I've not selected a goalkeeper from the drop down, which is why they're not there. Um, from the drop down, you can select um no nomination if you don't want to nominate anybody just come on select no nomination and the reason for no nomination you know peter smith was rubbish this month he conceded 23 goals in four, five games perfectly rational explanation to make your nominations. I'm so not, not selecting a player of the month. So again, all outfield players were garbage. Run on town this month. Select no, I need to put my name in here, Martin Fallon. Out, outfield, no nominations. I don't know why it says nominationed, but that will get corrected. Submit nominations. There you go. It's been em emailed through uh, along with a copy of the form. So we'll go back in. It doesn't say it's it doesn't say it's um been submitted. I think because it's a June award and we don't do June awards. But if it's if it's one of the awards that we do do throughout the season um, that will appear green because you just submitted it. So basically, the key is, if there's red tasks, click more and then follow the instructions as to what to do. Games. Any games will appear seven days beforehand. Any charges, you will have seven days to reply to them. Player awards, again, it will be seven days before the third of the month. And any other information, such as annual accounts, such as floodlight certificates, and any other information that we will be getting on there, we're going to try and get as many as possible on this area. They'll be there six weeks beforehand. Sometimes four, but, you know, for floodlight certificates and annual accounts, we're giving clubs six weeks notice. And it will appear on red until you do it. So, the, you know, the quicker you get it done, the quicker it'll get sent through, and the quicker it'll turn to green. So, yep, yeah, that's, that's all your tasks. Anything in red, click more, get it done. Simple as that. Okay, we'll click the um, badge to go back to the home page. Uh, the next category i'll run through everything else that's on here because the task is the is the majority one um but the others are quite straightforward really okay so the the very last area we're going to look at is the rest of the club admin area uh, we've covered task which is the the main area um a lot of your know, time will be spent on the tasks uh, but there are six other areas, so we'll jump back in and we'll have a look at them now. Again, I'm Runcorn Town um, Club Secretary for this. Tasks recovered. 
so you can see the other six areas here first one club info so this is basically every bit of information we hold on your club um, as a leak so the first bit general information very top level the club name's fixed so you put in your ground your address postcode and contact number um, don't have to put a contact number if you don't want website and your twitter address the next bit is handbook information so i'm just going to scroll down to there a second this is all stuff that previously appeared in the handbook so your team entity that's important it's required by the fa um Rungon town is an unincorporated members club others might be a limited company so you put limited company with your limited company address might be a charity so you put that with your charity address might be a members owned club um can't remember the terminology for them um but you put that with your again your members number um your president put there if you've got one your list of directors or committee um for those you know unincorporated members clubs that you'd put in there underneath that is your secretary's details and your chairman's details so this is your name address postcode your telephone numbers there and your email address exactly the same for the chairman uh, obviously this is redacted because this is going on um, YouTube underneath that other information so your program editor together with their email address you've got your match secretary together with their mobile number and email address you've got your welfare officer along with their email address uh, the reason that's important is obviously we are the Charter Standard League, and we do have under 18s playing in the Northwest Counties League, so it's important that each club does have a welfare officer. Uh, and finally, the manager's name or the manager's name in Runcard Town's case, so they've got two of them at present. So, underneath that is other stuff that previously went in the handbook. Um, we don't actually do a physical handbook anymore, it's all online, but. Directions to your ground, railway station, county FA, year form, previous attendance, previous leagues. A lot of this doesn't change, to be honest. One that does change is your colours. So, if you've changed kits since last season, particularly your alternative colours or your goalkeeper jerseys, please go into the club admin area and update this. Like I say, a lot of it doesn't change. Scrolling down, your midweek night and when you have meetings. Your very final bit is website information. So on the league website, we do have club pages. Each club does have their own club page. And there's a lot of information there. You know, fixtures, results, stats. Um, but there's also areas, you know, on visiting your ground. So it's important this is kept up to date. The top two are admission charges and program costs for the forthcoming season. Underneath that, parking and club facilities. You know, what Really what your ground has got to attract visiting people. You've got your nearest bus route. You've got your honours, which is split by a semicolon. And finally, you've got your club history. Um, just looking at this Runcorn Towns was updated at the end of the 2022-23 season so it, it does need updating um, just the last paragraph really so please do ensure that this is up to date um, if you want to make changes you can do so if I just submit that it'll say no changes made and I'll go back and say okay we'll make some changes Midweek night, we'll say it's a Tuesday. Program costs £2, not £2.50. And the large car park, you know, 
we've just sold some of it for housing, for example. So 150 cars. Put it down to 100 cars. Any, any changes you want to make. Basically, you do that. You submit your changes. Again, is the police confirm? So it tells you what changes you've made. You've been doing night. You've changed your program. You've changed, and your parking facilities you've changed. If you're happy with them, click confirm, or else you press edit. I'm quite happy, so we'll confirm them. Um, it also emails a copy of the changes through to your email address just to say that you've made the changes and what changes you've made, and then you click there to go back to the club admin. So that's club info. Images are the images we hold of your club. So you can see here there are six photos associated with Runcorn Town, and these are below. Now these are used in two different areas. One is when, when the league website does a news story on your club, assuming it doesn't have a news story and uh, an image accompanied with it, then it will use one of these six at random. Quite often news stories do have an, an image accompanying them. So let's say, for example, a Runcorn Town player happens to win Player of the Month. Unlikely, I do know. But say that happens, there's usually a photograph of the presentation alongside it. So we would, it wouldn't use one of these photographs. It's only where there's no accompanying um, photograph, it would use them. The other area it uses them is on the club pages. There's an image at the top, and it will use one of these six at random. You're not limited to six. You can have as many as you want. Um, but please do, you know, at least have one or two, just for a bit of variety when people visit your club page. Um, it's better than having a generic Northwest Counties image. So if you do want to add more photos, or indeed remove some, quite a few do have squad photos on here, which um, age very quickly. So if you need to remove them, just drop me a message and I will add photographs or remove them. If you're wanting to add them, it's 1,028 pixels wide by 585 pixels tall. I will generally resize it for you. I don't really like blowing images up, so if you send me one that's 300 pixels wide, I'll say not suitable. Um, so, yeah, but any images that are taken with a smartphone or, you know, a decent camera, I'll be more than enough resolution. So just send them through to me. Uh, and I will put them on your club page. So that's images. Documents. If I just open up another window and go to nwcfl.com, underneath league info here, contacts, rules, forms, directives, respect code of conduct, advertising materials, and league assets such as badges, etc. Well, all them. Are on this page documents you see all the league rules are there all the league forms are there all the league directives are there etc etc all the way down the reason they're here is basically to make your life easier as a club secretary instead of going to looking for some documentation it will be in here so if you need a registration form and you can't think where it is log on to club admin come in here control f and registration registration and there you go there's the registration form your dugout form your procedures everything's there you know easy to access all the links work and they've all been updated ahead of the 2023-24 season lists uh basically there's three of them here at the minute you've got club secretaries list club chairman's list and league officials list there will be two more. The, the two other ones will be um, Club Welfare Officer, when that gets populated fully, and also Program Editors. Um, now, they're obviously designed to give to your Club Welfare Officer or Program Editor, so if they need to get in touch with their counterparts at any other club, they can easily do so. You've got Players. So if you're signing a player, 
generally you've got a registration form. It's got the name on it. It's got the date of birth on it. You can click here to just ensure that they're not signed on for another club. Um, we all know players who attend training sessions in June each year, June or July. They'll sign a registration form. They'll then leave that club before they kick a ball. And then fast forward to January, they forgot they were even signed for that club. So it's a useful check to make sure that the player you're signing is not signed on for somebody else. Because obviously that will land you with a charge. So you just literally put the first name in here. We'll put Mark. We'll tab down to the surname. Um, we'll put Theo. And the date of birth will be the 4th of the 8th, 1992. The player's not going to exist because we've just made them up. And when you press search, it says, thank you for using the search form. There are no current players registered with that name and date of birth. Obviously, you can check another one. So this time I'm going to do a real person. Um, we're going to do Big Stalwart Mini Adeg Benro. And he's played for a number of clubs. He's quite well known throughout the um, Northwest Counties League. I'll tab down to his date of birth. Obviously, you're not going to see this because I'm going to redact it for um, GDPR reasons. But it basically click on check player. It come up there with um, thank you for using the search form. Mini has been registered in the Northwest Counties League. His latest registration is with Ashton Town from the 10th of July this year until the 31st of May next year. That's the standard default end date for non-contract players in the league. Uh, underneath that, it says please find below appearances for this player in the last five seasons. So you know you can scroll down. See what clubs he's played for in the last five seasons. What appearances he's made, should you wish. And then, again, you can check another player or just go back to the home page by clicking on the badge. The very final one is to log out. So the club admin is session-based. You can click log out to log out and then obviously log back in again if you need. You can also just look, click in the top corner to... Shut down your session, which will also log you out. So it's there if you need it to log out of your session. Okay, so that concludes the walkthrough of the club admin area on the Northwest Counties League website. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time out to watch this. Uh, the aim is for new club secretaries and for, for new people to, you know, who have not used the area before to, to watch this video and get used to it, really. Um, what I would say is the club admin area, it's been developed by myself because I, I'm a club secretary and it was hugely frustrating writing out signing on form, uh, not signing on form, a match report form, and then having to write it out again with the post-match information and then write it out again for the press. And it's like, we're doing this three times. And then I had to email it to the league who then type it up. It just seemed a bit pointless. So we tried to get it all online. Everything in one place. I think club secretaries do love this area. Um, but it is your area. You know, it's designed to help you out. Um, adding on the charges this summer, again, it's to help you out. It's to cut down on emails. Uh, and also other stuff such as the accounts and the floodlight information. It's, it's to improve your life, basically. If you do have any ideas for the area, anything that can improve it, please do just drop me an email. Uh, and I'll be, I'll be happy to pick that up. Uh, alternatively, just you know, give me a phone call, uh, and I'll have a chat with you. But thank you very much for taking the time out to watch this, um, and enjoy the 2023-24 season. Thank you.